Welcome back everyone to Nanolades of Dawn, Air Man, your host Dominic or Shadow here, and we have another match. It's a match in Trojan Hills. It's a match between Google, uh, Google Frog and FFC, and it's starting right now. FFC going for the Spider-Bot Factory, Google Frog going for the Shield-Bot Factory. Pretty standard here. I mean, Spider-Bots on this map are actually quite effective too, because they don't have to worry about the cliffs so much. Though, at the same time, this is a rather large map, which does make it difficult to just lost send them all around but we've seen fleas do really good work recently i think last week was a very apt demonstration of the power of fleas i think it was last week though ffc clearly just using them primarily for scouting however i do expect we're going to be seeing a lot more fleas coming forward i mean flea venom wow flea venom i haven't seen flea venom as a build up for spider and well since before red back and that was three years ago so yeah that, that brings me back in the hand google frog is going for the standard shield raid raider setup Nothing really all that surprising. I mean, the shields can just waltz in and don't have to worry about fleas very much. Though, that's only assuming that there aren't that many fleas. I mean, we saw last last time, I think it was FFC actually, playing spiders, going for mass fleas. Fleas actually do a lot of damage. Do a lot more damage than you think. I mean, as the general rule is, riots do beat raiders, but if you have enough raiders, the riots can't win. It's like, riots beat raiders, but numbers beat everything. On the other hand, big advantage to spiders right here. This weaver easily able to get in up, well, not just in up into this plateau expansion, but also escape if need be, because there is a bandit coming in here to try to deal with this. Google Frog already thinking about the fact that their opponent will probably expand the plateau. They are going spiders. This is the closest expansion. But that is something that has already been accounted for. The load is coming up before the bandit gets in at all in range. Google Frog has no idea it's there. No, Google Frog. They do have some idea there's a lotus there. Very faint idea, or at least apparently do. The ghosts were there, but nope. Is that lotus even in range? Like, can it even hit the bandit? Oof, I don't think it can actually hit the bandit. Kind of depends exactly where the fire point is, but I I suspect it actually is. Nope, there it is. Okay. Nicely done, FFC. Good thinking with that lotus. Hard to tell if it would actually work, but it totally worked. At the same time, though, Google Frog is doing a really good job just making sure FSC has to work hard for every expansion. Mind you, FSC, they're doing the same thing, but a couple guard mode bandits, totally fine. I think I've got to do more often, too, actually, but guard mode on things. Oh, and here's what I was talking about. Fleas coming in. This is what I mean. They, they do get rid of the bandits pretty effectively. You get enough of them, the bandits do die. Please be in fight mode. Please be in fight move. Please be in fight. Actually, attack. Attack works too. Not far enough away. The one thing about fleas and venom has to be something handled with care is that venom splash range is a little bit less than the flea range. So if you're moving the fleas into attack rather than using attack command or fight move command, the fleas will end up way too close and get stunned out by the venom. But FFC was totally on point with that. Did not fall into that trap at all. At this point, FFC. While they had had to work with their expansion, they have had them pay off. Also in the center pretty strongly, too. And Google Frog will be able to punch through that with the bandit, but at quite high cost. Actually, maybe not. No, with this, this much firepower? No, Google Frog's not going to be able to punch through the center at all. Do have some rogues to help deal with that, though, and that will help. That will do the trick. So it's kind of funny. I mean, Google Frog has all these... Has everything set up to try to stop the near expansion. Stop the plateau expansion, but one bandit wasn't enough thanks to the Lotus. Trying to stop the backyard expansion, but FFC's not even going for that. FFC, I'm sure they're aware of that, though. Yeah, they're partially aware of that. But FFC just goes for the center, because why not? I mean, this expansion here, too, the t totally makes sense. They had the plateau. FFC might as well take the sides. Google Frog, on the other hand, going heavily for the backyard expansions, which does mean that their economy is doing fine, despite the fact that they lock, they lack center control. There aren't that many expansions in the center. And of course, on top of that, all the stuff here... Wow, FC with rapid-fire nanoframes. That's... I wonder if there's a thing you do... I've, I've never really tried doing that, honestly. I'm curious if there's a key combination or something you can use to do that. I think it's Q by default. But I'm not sure. It's like just build a bunch of nanoframes. Hmm. Oh. Also, this is not a request. I should point out, all the matches today are not requests. They're matches I looked up myself and went, oh, these look good. 
like searched up just singularity neutron star matches just to see what had been played recently and get an idea. But this is entirely my choice. Just for you people who, just for everyone out there who assumes that everything is a request, everything that is a request, or almost everything that's a request, gets cast. But I didn't get any requests recently. Or at least I don't think I did. If I missed any of that, I'm sorry. That could have happened. But back to the game, though, what's not missed is those those rogue shots. FFC's commander managing to finally dodge them after losing a third of its HP. But it should be fine. Losing a lot of fleas in the process, but FFC's already switched off to the recluses. And their commander with the lightning gun, meaning, of course, the shields are effectively useless. And good choice of commander upgrade weapon there. Same time, okay, recluse crab flea. Interesting mix. Definitely dealing with Google Frog's forces, recluse crab flea... Recluse Crab Flea makes a lot of sense. I feel like Crab is a little bit risky because if, if the rogues get close to the flea, sorry, to the crab, then the rogues deal with the crab. But if the crab can get on a hill or otherwise get out of the way, it'll be fine. And more raiding bandits trying to do their job, not managing to do anything. Google Frog is actually having a very tough time pushing here, although at the same time, they are managing. I mean, Google Frog, with a slight economic advantage, with slight lack of energy, in fact, Having a bit of a hard time actually using all their build power, or using all their metal. Mostly focused clearly on the front lines. And the front lines, you can't easily get energy, although, admittedly, solar walls wouldn't be a bad idea. Are there any power plants planned? Because Google Frog is e-stalling hard, and this is unusual. They have some over the northwest side of the map, but that's not something you normally see Google Frog do. So clearly, FFC is putting a lot of pressure on them. Just having stuff in the center, and Google Frog trying to put as much pressure as possible on FFC, but FFC's already prepared for this. And the command with the lightning gun does lose out a little bit, but remember, the backyard expansion has nothing. There are some fleas to help defend, but nothing's been built here yet, so there's not a whole lot to lose if Google Frog goes around the back. Now, granted, that is a lot of firepower getting into Google Frog's base, so hopefully Google Frog does build the expansion just at least as a buffer, if nothing else. And again, the 15 fleas, these bandits are going to go down. Same time, a bunch of fleas trying to go into the backyard expansion here. They're gonna have a, I, I don't, I hope they don't go in the expansion. That lotus will kill them. But as it stands, Google Frog, are they even aware of this? Yeah, they are aware of this now. They can see the fleas coming in just up the hill, getting some scouting in, maybe getting a bit of damage in, but not much. That's the thing with fleas is they cannot deal with lotuses. They can deal with bandits without too much issue, but not lotuses. Oh, but the backyard was not managed in time. FFC losing the weaver does get rid of all the bandits, but. That weaver was the key asset. The fact that that's been lost means that, well, now I gotta get an emergency weaver just to start rebuilding that backyard expansion. And FFC is still behind economically, or at least they would be if Google Frog had the build power to make use of it, and they now do. Google Frog getting up those caretakers just to make sure that they can spend all their money. Again, there has been a lot of excess this game, and that's something that's been keeping FFC in a strong position despite the lack of metal extractors. But that advantage is going to be soon lost same time, Google Frog again with a spread attack. And that Venom's doing okay. I like the retreat there, just getting into the Lotus range, so that all the stunned bandits go down to the Lotus, but that's not going to be enough. The Lotus will eventually go down to those bandits, and there's nothing else defending here. The Venom trying to do its best, but no fleas, no wrecked backs, nothing. Finally, some fleas go over from FFC, but that's not going to be enough. Bandits taking some damage from that Lotus that one Weaver put in by the last breath of its life. But it's not going to be enough. These fleas, however, should be able to stop the bandits from wrecking the main base completely. However, that's already been about 4 or 5 metal per second on top of the weaver being destroyed. It's going to be another minute before they get rebuilt. And FFC's just now getting this weaver over to the, ba the backyard expansion. So Google Frog should be ahead by about 5 to, five to 10 metal per second for the next minute, minute and a half or so. And that's a really long time. Considering the excess stats between the two players, and that's that shouldn't be enough to make up for army value was. I should double check. I'll check, double check after the battle though. I don't really want to get in the way of that, just in case anything exciting happens. No, no, we're good. We're good. Yep. Yeah. I really wish this would be small. Google Frog, if you're watching, please make that small or make that save its size and shape, because I don't like the fact that it's so big. Yeah, at this point, metal used is just about even as Google Frog making use of that metal. The extra metal extracted. They did excess about a thousand metal, but they're fine now. And at this point, FSC is also accessing their metal, but they are managing to get in quite a lot of damage into the front lines. Oops, ah, my bad. 
Google Frog, however, with the Phoenixes, with the Air Plant in general, we should be seeing... Are we seeing Thunderbirds? No, pure Phoenixes. Google Frog, not going with the, Thunder, the Thunderbirds, which I guess kind of makes sense. We're not seeing shields. It's not a huge, huge amount of reason to do that. But, we'll see what happens. Also, how is the crab bad? I mean, the crab, yeah, it's definitely got... It definitely, you know, has to siege up in order to do anything, but the crab got buffed recently, if I'm not mistaken. Like, if I read the patch notes right, the crab now has effectively 1600 HP, not 1200 HP as it used to. The heck are... Oh, I see, those are reckless missiles. But yeah, my understanding is the crab's armor got improved because everything's armor now is a 4 times boost, not a 3 times boost, and the crab used to be a 3 times boost. But anyway, back to the game, though. FFC has yet to rebuild over here. They do have a weaver set up to do that, but how many weavers do they even have? They have three weavers right now, which is making it difficult to rebuild. One in the front reclaiming, which is nice to see, but it's still a tough setup just because there aren't a lot of weavers to readily rebuild these metal extractors or to handle the reclaim of everything that's died in the process of killing the metal extractors. So FFC kind of leaving metal on the table. Also exposing the fact that this backyard expansion has nothing blocking it, and there is a clear path right through here for Google Frog. And that's exactly what they're going to take. I mean, by air, but still, clear path. Might as well. Are these going to burn out the fleas? Are just going to guess where the fleas are and burn them out? Nope, going for the metal extractors. Interesting choice. Never really thought of the Phoenix as an anti-metal extractor unit, but seems to work all right. I don't know if the metal extractors will actually die from this. Yep. Yeah, they will. Good to know. Phoenixes destroy metal extract... Mostly destroy metal extractors. Holy crap. 0.4 HP! Not even 1 HP, but it's not dead yet. And actually, that does mean FFC's economy is a little... Well, it's basically on par with Google Frog still. On top of the fact that the center of attractions have been rebuilt and FFC doing a great job of getting rid of everything Google Frog has in the Eastern Plateau... Not to mention, having given away the fact that Google Frog realized, hey, there's a big weakness there, means FFC is now help going to help deal with it. Swiss getting rid of the bandits. The fleas are right here. Why are these fleas not attacking? The fleas are right... Okay, so no, I do know why the fleas aren't attacking. Six bandits is too many for these fleas to deal with. Never mind what I just said. But still, the Swifts are coming in and managing to at least soften up the bandits. A little inefficient because no one bandit has died yet. I think they should start dying pretty soon after all these strafing runs. You'd expect someone would go down. Actually, two or three more go down, and that means the fleas could just go in and attack, but right now I think these fleas are much more concerned about protecting the the weaver, and yeah, the, the swifts are doing fine. Still, FFC did lose all the ex extractors over here, but that's... that's out these extractors. Eh, FFC's got an even economy without them. Same time, though, FFC losing their commander to a raven strike. Death by bird strike. Not what you want to see. Though almost all of them do go down, but still, that was efficient. That worked. I mean, they got rid of the commander with the cost of a couple ravens. That means the front lines are actually doing okay. Normally, the issue with losing the commander is that the front lines become harder to defend, because now there isn't an armed builder dealing with setting up defenses to make sure that your opponent can't get through, but FFC's been doing a pretty good job reinforcing the front lines. I mean, they have the crab set up, they have the, the tarantula set up for anti-air. They have quite a few cranes on the ready to help rebuild if needed. I mean, it is obviously harder than not ha than having the commander, but it's not that bad of a situation. On top of the fact that, again, rogues get dealt with by fleas. So this is actually not a bad position to be in. Also, cranes being flying builders, if everything goes to pot in the middle of the map, well, those cranes can just run away. Really easy for them to get out of the dodge. And with all that, Google Frog has actually gone down to about 10, 8, 10 metal per second less than FFC. Not even counting Reclaim or anything else. And FFC having full control over the center of the map and full control over this Commander Corpse as soon as they start reclaiming it, which... I'm not sure when. That's a little bit tricky considering the bandits coming in here. There being enough of them to deal with the Fleas. Again, this is why it's a bit tricky to go Mass Flea. Like, Fleas are good, and with the right numbers, they can get rid of bandits, but there is a limit. I think that limit's around 20 or 30 Fleas, at which point you can just have 5 or 6 bandits come in and wreck face, which is exactly what we saw there. Now, that being said, the Swifts are still in... Or sorry, the Cranes, rather, are still in position to help deal with this. The Swifts are still in position to defend. 
but I don't think it's going to be enough. These fleas not going to help deal with the rogues because, of course, they can't. The outlaws are here. And those outlaws making it a massive problem. Nice switch over to the Hermes, though, from FFC to make sure that that is not just going to be the end of the game right there with that outlaw. So, Google Frog, their commander is in range to help defend. Ooh, but nice crab shot there. Helping to get rid of some of the rogues, helping to soften up the bandit a little bit. But even then, the rogues are able to deal with this entire plateau expansion. They did go a bit far forward, though. The outlaw should be able to take care of most of them eventually, but that's... That was still effective enough. Not only that, it bought time for the Hermits to get up the cliff. Getting on a reasonably even footing with the rogues, and now able to just get rid of them. Or at least force them back. I mean, Google Frog is still doing reasonably well when it comes to production, and switching over to Heavy Tank on top of that. Getting some Minotaurs up. While at the same time, Dante has just been completed for FFC. Interesting choice. I mean, Dante's pretty typical, but considering the fact that they've that FFC's been going on spiders for a while and is kind of relying on the spider altering movement properties to help defend their base, I almost would have expected a Scorpion. But no, we're indeed seeing a Dante. Which, I mean, that's the typical thing. That's what you usually see as a Strider. That's the default Strider. Of course, Minotaur Cyclops coming in here, and yeah, Double Minotaur Cyclops, I think that Dante's going to have a bit of a tough time. It will have a period where it'll be useful, but I almost wish it had come over to the Plateau, and then attacked from there, getting rid of all the Vandals, getting rid of everything that Google Frog set up for defenses, wiping out most of Google Frog's main front line, and then, yeah, okay, the Cyclops and Minotaurs would be a problem, but the value would have been found. As it stands, though, the Dante is FFC's primary offensive asset, and it's currently in a bit of an awkward position. Does provide a bit of appeal, though, in the anti-air. But, again, Minotaur Cyclops is ready to deal with it, and it itself is forced to retreat for reasons I can't quite... What is FFC seeing? What does FFC see right now? Basically everything. But I'm not sure what they're thinking, because there's really not a whole lot of threat right here. Right here. I mean, Google Frog's commander up in the main base does make me think that the Dante is just being set up to avoid that, let the... Let the Recluses deal with everything going on in the Plateau. Don't worry about anything about that. Just push the Dante and maybe try to, like I said, try to force Peel. Which isn't a bad idea, but again, that Cyclops is up. And the Minotaurs are up as well. The Dante only has so much you can work with. At the same time, Google Frog has a lot of firepower on FFC's doorstep. Most of it, of course, anti-air firepower, but still, that's a lot of firepower. And since FFC was focusing heavily on using air, the Swifts were their main defensive asset for a while. It's a bit of an interesting choice, but at the same time, 35 fleas! Uh, first of the Cyclops. I kind of think the Cyclops... Actually, the Cyclops doesn't have splash damage to make that work. That's actually a really, really good choice. If it weren't for the fact that that Stinger's Death Explosion killed off most of the, off the fleas, but hey, get rid of the Racketeers, get forced back some of the spiders there. I mean, or sorry, the spiders. These aren't spiders. They're tanks. Forced back some of the tanks there. Not a bad idea. Kind of cheap. I mean, 350... That's... 700 metal? That's cheaper than these three recluses, so... Total value there. And now it leaves Dante room to reload, get rid of one of the Minotaurs. Yeah, I like that. I mean, that's the thing the FFC's been doing a lot of, is really showing off the power of the fleet. So, I mean, they're just building, you know, several dozen fleas, sending them in, wiping out or forcing a retreat of an entire army allowing the rest of their forces to retreat and regroup, especially when they have a Dante. I mean, any unit with a D-Gun, you need to have some way of keeping it from getting just damaged too much when it's reloading. Now, the Dante does have the Heat Rays when it's not reloading, so it's not too bad off, but when your opponents have already gone for Cyclops and Minotaur, allowing that reload time is a good idea. Same time, the Plateau over the West, Google Frog is... should be able to deal with this. I mean, that's the thing. This amount of anti-air here does mean the Swiss can't do much. The lack of anti-ground means that the Recluses do have a bit of a shot. I'm just the fight move, though. Try There's the dance. There's the skirmisher dance that you always see. Same time, though, the Dante forcing Google Frog's force back. FC clearly just trying to project force on the center. Rebuild some of the middle extractors, get that expansion, make sure that they, they take that plateau. But clearly the Dante is not being used to try to actually take the plateau. More so, it's being used to make sure that Google Frog can't send in reinforcements to support the plateau along for the recluses and this scorpion coming up here. That makes more sense to actually deal with the plateau. Because the scorpion has a much easier time, obviously. It can just walk up the hill. So no problems there. But the Dante, that's just keeping Google Frog at bay. Like, what can Google Frog do unless they can actually deal with this Dante? And the Dante is constantly st staying out of range. 
And if anything goes to try to approach the Dante, it's either going to be several dozen fleas pushing back the tanks, or you're going to have all these recluses just providing that much more firepower. And on top of that, how many recluses are there? 15 recluses attacking this plateau. I don't even know if the scorpion is going to be necessary to take it out, and it doesn't look like FFC thinks so either. Sending that scorpion out to help support the Dante, it looks like they're probably going to be going around this way, possibly attacking the main base directly from behind. That would be cool, actually. That'd be, that's kind of what you need to use the scorpion for, given that it's cloaked. So I'm curious if that's going to work out, and I expect it will work out fairly well. Google Frog, more importantly, though, has been pushed off of the left pl plateau. There's a Weaver already in position to help deal with this stuff. I wonder where the cranes are. Are there cranes? I feel like there aren't cranes. No, they're, the cranes are all dead. Okay, never mind. There are no cranes. Oh, no, there are, there are cranes. What am I saying? There are two cranes right over here. Though there might be some fear about there being some vandals around. I think FFC has actually very little radar. No, they don't know one way or the other. So at this point, Google Frog, they do have a massive information advantage. I'm curious what that's going to actually do, but it looks like... No, it's not going to do much. So Google Frog just continuing to push forward. Should be able to... I mean, it actually should be able to wipe out everything over the western side of the map. Eastern side of the map, or the center of the map, rather, is going to be a bit harder. But Google Frog, I mean, this is their last stand. Scorpion's coming in here, which is basically going to be there to win the game at this point. I'm not sure what Google Frog has planned, though, because, again, their units right now, they're kind of de de dealing with heavy heavy assault units, like Dante's. It's the Cyclops is four. Flea's coming in here, providing that much more fire support. Although, Google Frog's bandits will help get rid of the recluses, even though with 14 of them, I'm not super confident how effective they're going to be. Those bandits... I mean, six bandits against 14 recluses, there's type counters, but then there's numbers, and numbers are really important. On top of, again... FFC's constant flea screens. Which, to me, is the more important thing. Don't forget, also, the flea screens mean the racketeers can't do much, so that's the thing. Like, FC, those fleas. Just annoying fleas. All of the crab... Ooh, actually, that crab is taking a lot of damage. Those emissaries should be able to finish it off right about now -ish as the assault force comes in. I mean, even with the armor, even with the healing, it's not enough. The crab just completely wiped out, but there's the fleas to help deal with it. Scorpion's already almost in position, but no. Falls back from what looked like a base assault to help deal with all the all the heavy units here. I feel like it might be a little late, though. The, the fleas have gone down, but the Dante's image and the Scorpion's in position. Google Frog, they don't have any skirmishers, or sorry, don't have any striders of their own, or for that matter, skirmishers, actually. I mean, they have, they have this. That's about it. But there's that D-Gun. There's... There is the Cyclops being stunned out. On top of the Dante, get rid of the Minotaurs. Not sure what Google Frog is going to have to work with here, because that Minotaur... Uh, that Cyclops more so. The Cyclops being the main counter here is going down with very little fuss. It's just done. Same time, Scorpion has been racketeered. But it did its job. It got rid of the Cyclops. It's pushed back the Scorpions. I mean, Google Frog is actually managing to deal a lot of damage to the racketeers. In fact, that Dante is very possibly going to go down, and indeed it does. This might be a turnaround point. Google Frog able to deal boatloads of damage here, not really losing any of these forces, any of the... I mean, okay, they lost Cyclops, so the Minotaurs are doing fine. The Scorpion getting out of dodge, but that means it's not able to actually help deal with this stuff. And the Racketeers, they didn't have the screening, or they didn't have to deal with the screening of the Fleas. There is a Paladin coming up here, which I'm honestly kind of surprised by. Bit of a Hail Mary pass from FFC. They're building Fleas and Paladins. The Fleas basically being used as a screening force maybe in time to help let the Paladin be built up, but no, FFC does not have a minute. They need to find a minute. They need to somehow scrounge up a minute from being assaulted by all these outlaws, and I don't see that happening. Like, the Fleas can't deal with the outlaws, and they'd be normally used to deal with the Minotaurs, but Google Frog knows, I just, I don't have to worry about this stuff. I can just push right in. Stardust Rover is done it will get rid of enough of the outlaws to allow for flea screens to come back in. On top of that, the Hermit's in here as well, so that's that did its job. The Hermit's will be able to get rid of all of the Minotaurs, and the Paladin should have enough time to be built up. Ooh. Oh, that fusion reactor. Second fusion reactor going down as well. There goes most of the air factory. Google Frog's commander, this is still super risky. The Paladin will probably not even get built up before the game's over. Google Frog's commander goes down. That's the Air Factory down. Oh, not even. Not quite. Air Factory is still in play. And Google Frog, I think at this point, they were 
yeah, they are just done. Scorpion comes in again, finishes off the reinforcement forces, and Google Frog throws in the towel after a very hard-fought game. But FFC just happened to have that territory better, got the mental income better. I liked how in the middle of the game, though, we saw quite a bit of damage on the territory. We had FFC losing the entire left side of the plateau. Google Frog able to take a fairly large chunk of the map. Didn't quite manage to pivot that into a win, though, because those flea screens on top of the fact that Google Frog didn't really get any outlaws or anything to help deal with fleas effectively, especially in the later game where we saw the Minotaurs and Cyclopses come up. I mean, that meant the fleas could just run wild and basically stop Google Frog from actually pushing into FFC's territory. By the time that happened, Google Frog had lost almost everything. FFC had a massive economic advantage. The main thing with FFC is because they were focusing on the Paladin, they didn't have the same frontline forces that would allow them to stop the force coming in from Google Frog. I think FSC was thinking that Google Frog wouldn't attack so soon, so there'd be another minute or so left before FSC needed the Paladin to win the game. On the other hand, I don't know if FSC quite realized how many Racketeers there were, because that those Racketeers were the one reason why FSC wasn't able to defend with the two Striders. If it weren't for those Racketeers, or if there were enough Fleas to help deal with the Racketeers instead of having them fire on the Dante and Scorpion, then that probably would have gone very differently, and Google Frog probably would have surrendered sooner, to be honest. But still, very strong economic play from FSC, very strong territory control play by, by Google Frog. Especially a, the offensive play early on. And yeah, that was a that was a pretty fun game. Yeah, sheep, I understand. That sheep moaning on the chat that Google Frog probably would have gone better with tanks from the start of the game rather than shields. And I agree. I totally agree. Kodachi against Flea? Yeah, FSC would have not been able to go mass flea if it had been started in tanks. That just would not have happened. Or at least not without a lot of care. Certainly not in the early game. We probably would have seen, like, Venom, like, early Recluse. Probably. That's that's what I'd expect against Kodachi. But not Flea. If it was Matt's Blitz, then yeah, Fleas, but the Kodachi's right there. And it gets rid of all the Fleas. Although, actually, come to think of it, properly micro, the Fleas would be able to just bait out a Kodachi shot. Like, one goes forward, baits out the Kodachi shot. Now you know where the fire pit is. You run the Fleas around the fire pit and hit the Kodachi. With 20 or so Fleas, you should be able to take out the Kodachi. And granted, that's twice the cost of a Kodachi, but that's also what you're dealing with. I mean, this you are fighting as a unit that's essentially designed to fight you, but there is that micro trick I could see being done to help deal with it. Anyway, that is that I think I'm gonna put that there oh yeah right thanks sheep point out the flea can't harass the welder as well that's another really good point flea cannot harass the welder because it just fires back at it and the welder has 2000 HP the flea just can't fight through you need like 20 or 30 to, just to do that okay still blue you're right that Kodachi has a larger fireball and a faster reload but I I'd have to look at the exact numbers. Eyeballing it, it looks like the Kodachi Fireball is a little bit smaller than the Flea's max range. So I think with the Flea properly microed around the Fireball, you'd be able to avoid having the Flea's burn to death. Maybe. But you also only have 4 or 5 seconds, and like I said, it's like 20 Fleas that you'd need, roughly. I've done the math. I mean, it's back to the envelope math, so I'm not entirely sure. What is... Let's see... 45 DPS. Kodachi has about 800 HP. If you have 20 fleas... Now, if you have 20 fleas, that's 2 seconds and it's dead. Or not... No, 20 fleas is 1 second and it's dead. 10 fleas is 2 seconds and it's dead. So yeah, if you have... If you have 10 fleas, and you just wrap them around the fireball, I think you'd be able to kill the Kodachi. But you're right. Most people don't micro their units very... Very... Dedicatedly in 0k. So yeah, if you had someone coming in here with 300 APM, microing all their units perfectly, then I could see that working. But like I said, that is a micro trick. That is a very long shot. I think most people would just decide to not go for Fleas, and instead probably go for Venom and Recluse. I don't... I want to say Redback, but no one ever goes Redback, and I can kind of see why. Well, anyway, that is going to be that. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. But that's going to be it for me tonight. Or at least I think it is. Let me just double check... Yep, I will be, I'll be heading out very shortly. So thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. And 
You know, and actually, no, 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 no. I want to show off. I mean, one of the things I wanted to show off in this was that we have good frame rate on big games. So I'm going to find a 3v3 game. Because i got to be honest, I'm actually starting to get a bit of a fondness for 3v3. I mean, Shaman's done it. Shaman's made me actually think 3v3 is pretty cool. So I'm going to go find what looks like a pretty good 3v3 game. Probably like a 15 minute game or so. And show off. That we have 3v3 now. So we can find a halfway decent one, though. Nah, it's Cooper Hill. It's not, that's too small. Ah. Uh, I just really want to show this off. Because I, I I put a lot of effort into actually optimizing out my settings so that we can actually watch 3v3s into the mid to late game and it'll actually work. Nah, that's too small screen battlefield. I haven't seen that, so yeah. We should be able to get high frame rates. I mean, like, 30 to 40 frames per second. Uh, it's not 60 FPS, but it's smooth. So I'll be back in a couple seconds with that.